the audience, uh, we change now to uh, the transfer of directorship. And please allow me to use a few words to say a few things and then we get the thing done, so to say, and get this chain off my shoulder. <laughs> I know you're waiting for that. <laughs> a lot of people asked me um, the last several months, how did you now really experience this rectorship? These nine years of duty uh, as a rector. And after giving it a thought, it was not so complex. Uh, it, it, it needs a few lines. In my family, so that's the family mole, M-O-L, so it stands also for mole in English, the small animal who creeps in the soil. We have, uh, we are not uh, uh, from a very uh, rich background or something, but we still have for a long time a motto with the family. And the motto is, Fodio et ingredio. And exactly that motto is saying how I experienced that. And not all of you are fluent in Latin, neither am I. Uh, so I'll translate that for you. Uh, and the best translation in Dutch is ik vroed en vorder. <laughs> and in English it would be something like I root around and book progress. And I think that's a little bit how I experience my rectorship, which comes very close to my family history, of course, but also tells a little bit on uh, yeah, that you, as a rector, you try to make progress, but it's not always an easy job. And it was not always easy because uh, little did I expect it nine years ago what these nine years would look like. Uh, when I stepped in the rectorship nine years ago and took over from Martin Krop, my predecessor, the world looked really different. Uh, we didn't have that polarization so strongly in the world, and even on campus, on a macro level and a micro level. We also didn't know a lot about pandemics and COVID. And we've seen them coming and going and need to be prepared for uh, probably another one. We also had not so much an inward-looking country in the Netherlands, which we have today. It was very still an open uh, country, which looks to the outside world. And that's not always the case today. And we also had not such a large vulnerability of execute, executive board members, which we have today. And I also look at my colleagues there. Uh, and I quickly also have to admit then directly, because I'm still a rector, that I uh, for a long time omitted one of my ancillary activities. So I have now to announce that uh, once again. <laughs> so I hope it still can still be on the record. Well, maybe on second thought, it's not an ancillary activity. Maybe some see it as the main job of a rector. Also. <laughs> but we see also, of course, a good of a lot of good things happening in this past nine years. So when I started, the idea of interdisciplinarity was still very much at the periphery of our academic institutions. It's no longer there. The idea of sustainability was really at marginal groups, still there in society and also in academia. And it's now one of the core values which you cannot do without as a societal partner or as an academic institution. So that's for the dynamics which were there. But of course, what we also saw is a lot of stability and continuity in our institutions. So over the nine years, we as academic institutions and Wagen University and research have continuously to strive for academic excellence and integrity. We continue to have our education basically on campus and not only online. Wagen University and research as all the other Dutch universities and also the international partners we work with are very strongly on keeping their independence. And they continuously serve science and society in that. And they continuously to be international and outward looking and inclusive. So in that sense, universities are beacons of continuity and stability. And in that continuity and stability, I think we also booked some progress in the last year. And here's just one slide to say something on how many new networks and institutes we have st established in the past nine years, uh, and which we have been working so closely together as Wagner University and Research. We see also, and I just knew, mentioned a few things, the tremendous increase of uh, female professors in Wagner University and Research, and also in other universities in the Netherlands. I remind you, we are now also at Women's Day today, so it's very good to mention that also. Um, We've also seen the campus expanding and the budget expanding. Maybe not as much as we had hoped for nine years ago, 
But still, I think that is a major achievement. And we continue to be excellent in Wagen University in research, and I can say that now as director, in education, in research in our domain, in also being a sustainable campus, and in transparency as an academic institution. And I think that are quite nice institutions in this balance between continu continuity in academic institutions and a world outside there which is rapidly changing. So times indeed seem constantly to be changing, but see, remain seeing the larger picture of that. Before we go over to hanging this chain to uh, my successor, I want to say a few words of thanks. And I cannot thank everyone which I worked with for the past nine years, and many of you are also there, and I extremely appreciate that. So I do it a little bit by groups, and I use also some pictures which I took from uh, various trips to more uh, art museum types of qualities. First, I want to mention those people who I was allowed to serve, our students and academic staff. It has been a great honor to serve you, and I thank you also for making it not too difficult, at least not too often too difficult, uh, for me as a rector. I really enjoyed serving you, and I think that you're doing a great job here in your studies as well as your academic uh, research and education. Secondly, I want also to thank those people who I collaborate with. The executive board, the former one and the present one, which I work together. The rector is magnifici, and I pictured them here as really super persons who come from the sky constantly if there's something wrong there. But these super persons, they at least have a lifeline, which is a little bit different from the normal superman, which is portrayed. I also thank the collaborators from uh, uh, the president of the TU2 Institute, which I have so much joint collaborations and meetings, and where we set up such a nice way of collaborating together, the Applied Research Institutes in the Netherlands. Um, and, of course, also, I felt very much also uh, a good collaboration with our partners in the ministries, uh, in our academic networks in the Netherlands and throughout the world, uh, the business and the societal organizations where we work with. There's also then a category of people I want to thank which supported me uh, and which all those nine years helped me. Uh, and I also deliberately put first here uh, the supervisory board. Although they are meant to supervise me and the academic uh, or the, the executive board, I felt them much more as supporters of me. So on behalf of me, to you, Albert, but also, of course, to the entire uh, supervisory board. Thank you very much for that. But, of course, also, I was very much supported by what we sometimes call the middle management in our institution, uh, the ABCD group, or whatever we call them, but also the professors and the business unit managers, but especially also the supporting staff and the secretaries. Without all of you, I would have been nowhere, and also neither will be my successor. Sorry for that, Caroline, but you have them all and you can build on them. And finally, lastly, I also want to thank those who are very close to me, my friends and my family. <laughs> Sometimes I felt like really being exhausted, uh, hanging on the wall or something. And they were always there to support me, and I thank them really very much for that. And also they were there if I was getting a little bit too high above the ground and thought that really Wageningen was almost heaven on earth, they really also put my foot very much below the ground, <laughs> which is very adequate, I think, for a mole, so to say. <laughs> right, I think with that, things are packed together, at least in my office, uh, and I think it's time to transfer the chain to uh, the new rector. Um, so I'm very happy that we have such a magnificent successor of me. I would really like to call upon the floor Caroline, Professor Caroline Kruse, the next rector of Wageningen University of Research. Please. I would almost keep this chain if you... 
joking. Okay, this transfer always is a little bit a ceremonial thing, and uh, my colleague Rekha Magnificus knows exactly how it goes. If you are not sure when you should start clapping, just always, as you did for the past nine years, look at the rector, and then he gives the signal when it's done. With transferring this chain, I transfer also to you all the rights and privileges, but also the duties and responsibilities as the 49th rector of Wageningen University and Research. Uh, and I really am very happy that you will succeed me. And I ask the mace bearer to help me to get rid of this chain. <laughs> Salve, Recta Magnifici. Iterum, iterumke, salve. Congratulations. Vale, recto magnifice, iterumque vale. <laughs> Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. I am so happy that this moment has arrived. I feel honored and privileged to be the next Rector Magnificus and Vice President of Wageningen University and Research. I've always been very proud to be part of this organization, proud of the teaching, research and impact for healthy food and a healthy living environment. We answer important questions, how to feed people in the future, on a planet that's suffering from global warming, biodiversity loss, and water security issues. Today we've heard three great pitches of our young scientists and a wonderful keynote of Nicole about the microbiome and how important the microbiome is for life on Earth. And that we often overlook it and take it for granted. And that struck me. Because somehow, the same goes for education. I think we often overlook and take for granted the impact that teaching has on the lives of our young people, our students. We are training the next generation of experts that will be the change agents that we need for the transitions in society that we are looking for, the energy transition, the protein transition. Our students of today are the generation that's going to make the difference. Another reason why I'm pr proud of this organization is that we excel in research. First of all, by keeping a strong fundament. Only when our disciplinary science is strong, we can join forces to address the grand challenges in our domain. Future pathways towards sustainable food, climate, water, and nature require multi, inter, and transdisciplinary approaches. And I think our unique campus is the best place for that and the breeding ground for those approaches. We have impact in society. I was trained in a tradition where scientists were invited to leave their ivory towers and to reach out to stakeholders in society to co-create the, fu the futures that we want to really find answers together, realizing that science alone cannot provide the answers that society is looking for. For me, finding answers together has many meanings, the word together. It means together combining natural and social sciences, but also combining the fundamental and applied sciences, or combining research and education but also the collaboration with our stakeholders in society and governments in Wageningen, in the Netherlands, 
and abroad. And we are focusing on an international domain. So I'm very happy that many of our international partners are here today with us. I'm looking forward to contribute to all of that in the years to come. I'm also very much looking forward to the implementation of the new academic career framework. That is our Wageningen translation of the National Recognition and Rewards Program. I think it will make our scientists happier and therefore our science better. But I also think it will only be successful if it goes hand in hand with a change in our academic culture. A change towards values that I personally hold very high. It's about di more diversity in academic profiles and academic output. More flexibility, more open science, and more team science, more togetherness. The new academic framework is now, at this moment, only a piece of paper. It's describing procedures, indicators, and performance areas. But I think we all realize that a culture change will never happen because of a piece of paper. It requires investment in people, in training, in dialogues. And I'm very willing to make that investment. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost time now to give the floor to our president, Schalke Heimovara. But before I do that, I would like to say a few words to Arthur Moll. Arthur, you've been a wonderful rector. I think the past nine years were very good years for Wageningen University and research, and you played an important role in that. Actually, you're setting the standard very high for me. I can only hope that I will be as good as the rector as you have been for us over the past years. You will be my role model. And I'm very happy and glad that you will be, for the coming months at least, just across the street from me to reach out if I have questions. So thank you very, very much. And then now, ladies and gentlemen, And then now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pass on the floor to our president, Schalke Heimovara. Please, Schalke. Thank you. Welcome, distinguished guests. First, I would like to welcome Professor Kruse as our new Rector Magnificus. Caroline, I have already got to know you a little, and I'm really looking forward to, together with Rens, working for Univers uh, Wageningen University and research. I'm also incredibly proud that 123 years after our first female student enrolled the then Rijkslandbouwhogeschool, 72 years after our first female professor, Professor Fisser, was appointed here, and 10 years after we welcomed our first female president, Professor Fresco, we have chosen, uh, we have now a woman as rector. We have chosen the best candidate, but with this we have also done justice to all these women who have for more than 100 years, side by side with men and other genders, made word to what we are today. We will work to ensure that the talents of the broad diversity of our students and staff will be present at all levels of our, uh, of our institute better than it is today. And then I would like to dedicate a few words to Arthur. In a gentle way, you can shake the world. A quote attributed to Arthur Pendragon, also known as King Arthur. Ever since the 12th century, people have been telling the legend of King Arthur, of the round table and the many battles he fought. Today I will take a brief look back at our own Wageningen Arthur, his battles, and his importance for were. 
I will outline the landscape in which Arthur arrived, the achievements of his reign, and a brief sketch of his style. In a gentle way, you can shake the world. Arthur did not begin his reign by pulling a sword out of a stone, but by putting on the chain of office in 2015, just like we have seen before. When Arthur started, Wurr was in a period of growth after some lesser years. We had grown to around 10,000 students and a little under 6,000 staff. Our, repu our academic, re academic reputation was looking good and we had just moved to the current campus. And together with Louise, Thijs and Rens and the whole of the Wuer community, he took Wageningen from there to where we are today with 13,000 students and almost 8,000 staff. A knowledge institution that shows the true collaboration between discovery and applied science. A truly international institution and a real pact, impact on its well-defined domain. Arthur himself is a living example of a scientist who is not constrained by silos. He graduated as an environmental scientist and completed his PhD as a social scientist, an environmental social scientist. He has been a professor with universities in China and Malaysia, next to his professorship here. And from this background, he has worked tirelessly to promote Wageningen and to promote Wageningen's multi strands and interdisciplinary approach as well as its global scope. And this then is one of the important battles in which Arthur has distinguished himself. Which brings me to the many important feats of arms that Arthur has achieved for this fine institution. And it reminded me of the noble acts of King Arthur and the Round Table by Thomas Deloney. Oh, Arthur's reign, a timeless tale, where truth and hon honor shall prevail. Its legends sung and stories told, the round table's glory will unfold. In Wageningen, we have our own round table, in our boardroom. From where we try to carefully steer this institution. The tale of our own Arthur tells of many battles. Some fought at this very table. He has worked on the foundations of work by, for example, rebuilding the education staff department. He has made sure that the growing number of students could actually be educated with the quality we strive for with the extended daytime schedule, for example. And he has managed to reduce the number of resits to ease some of the pressure of our teachers. Because when Arthur took office, the pressure on the organization was great. The numbers had grown but the resources had not. Fortunately, during his time here, the relief has come, but with it a great challenge to distribute that just and transparent. So the use of the Van Rijn resources, the sector plan resources, the startup and incentive grants have all been done by him, and that may sound a lot simpler than it is. And Arthur has always arranged this, with ample consultation, with also, but also with the creativity and the wit that is needed, needed. He has also worked on renewing our university. For example, by shaping Tenure Track 2.0, but now, together with our new rector, as she has just explained, by taking the important step to shape the new framework for recognition and rewards. And Arthur has been one of the driving forces behind the AVU alliance. The alliance between the universities of Eindhoven, Wageningen, Utrecht and the UMCU. And there are many other feats of arms that have involved quite a battle. For all of these, he had to overcome opposition. And in doing so, he sat around this round table with all involved, with his characteristic tirelessness optimism and positivity, and always with the commitment to come out of it together. It is not the years in your life that count, but it is the life in your years, said Arthur Pendragon. And our Arthur lives by it. 
the amount of life, work, and hours you can squeeze into one day is truly impressive. His last battleground as rector was outside of Wageningen, where he fought for self-government, self-regie, on behalf of the universities of the Netherlands, and in doing so, trying to protect the important international character of our academia. The poet Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote of Arthur, far other is this battle in the West, where to we move than when we strove in youth. But as it goes, rectors come and rectors go. We are delighted that Arthur is not leaving us. He will continue to dedicate himself to science, educating, education, and to international collaborations for and in Wageningen. And I suspect with the same work ethic as we, as we have to come to, as we have come to expect from him. And his fame is such that there are already games on sale that allow you to witness his future exploits. And in keeping with the demands of time, they are entirely Dutch spoken. <laughs> King Arthur is quoted as saying, Camelot lives in the hearts of those who believe in its ideals. And I would say, Wur lives in the heart of those who live, believe in its ideals. And Arthur is certainly one of them. I have really enjoyed working with you and being charged with your energy and optimism. And of, on behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you. And according to tradition, we want to capture the leg legend of our Arthur on the wall with the portrait gallery of our rectors. So may I ask you, Arthur, to join me so we can unveil your portrait together. I'm missing something. Hmm? I'm missing something. Yeah. <laughs> Je moet nog heel even zitten. Oké. Okay. There it is for all of you. And I'm happy to say we have redesigned our wall to give a bit more of the to show a bit more of the diversity of our community. But well, that will be later. Unveiled. And now I would like to give the word to our mayor, who wants to specifically thank you for the collaboration with the city of Wageningen. Thank you, President Hemovara. Um, I would first uh, like to congratulate the new Rector Magnificus, Caroline Kruse, Professor Caroline Kruse, with uh, her rectorship. And uh, we are, as a municipality, of course, looking forward to the further collaboration. Uh, and we are uh, sure that that will be a great collaboration ahead. But I would also like to, um, to take the opportunity to say some words to former Rector Magnificus, Arthur Moll. Um, so, um, guests, distinguished guests, excellencies, on behalf of the city of uh, Wageningen, I would like to thank you today for your uh, significant contributions to Wageningen over the past nine years. Although the university has said goodbye to the locations in our historic city center and has centered its activities here on the beautiful Wageningen campus, I dare to say that the figurative distance between city and university, between society and academic community has become closer than before. Your personal efforts, together with the entire board, of course, during the past decade contributed significantly to this. A great example is our joint city agenda, which you personally support, and we work together to improve the environment 
in which we live and work together here in Wageningen. You encourage students to participate in local projects to import, improve the quality of life in our joint hometown. And your enthusiasm pays off. It has already led to a great collaborations in the past years. For example, students are working on greening our city. Another group is focusing on socially strengthening the Nude, one of our neighborhoods. A third group is investigating how uh, locals can create a project to build and live in nature inclusive surrounding. As mentioned, we have also met as the executive of the municipality and with you personally, regularly over the past years. What always struck me it is that, that you have been very approachable and you, were very, you are very interested in people. You make them feel at ease and approach them in a positive way. You do this also during difficult times because you have also carried an important burden of governing the university, for example, during the COVID crisis and making sure that the social distancing doesn't mean that the, dis the distance went too big during that uh, period and that contact with students and staff during these circumstances kept going. We also experienced uh, fun things together. Uh, of course, the yearly opening of the annual inter introduction days for new students. Uh, I enjoyed that personally always when you suggested at last minute to ignore the proposed program and start improvising. And we had uh, some fun uh, baking scrambled eggs and handing it out to the students, which it, you did for all those nine years, and I only joined last year uh, in doing so. So, dear Arthur, ladies and gentlemen, back to uh, more serious matters, because earlier the research awards has already been awarded, but as municipality of Wageningen, we are presenting a new award today. The City of Life Sciences Award. This award is intended as a special appreciation for persons or organizations that have made essential contributions to the connection between city and university within Wageningen. Um, and Wageningen is the city of life sciences. It will not surprise you all that you, Arthur, are the first person to receive this award. And this City of Life Sciences Award includes a gift. There's a small tree I will hand to you uh, for your green spaces back at home. But um, we will plant a tree, a larger tree, um, a sweet chestnut in the Torque Park, a place where the university once started, with the main building uh, then called uh, the Bassecourt, uh, the main building of the then called Agricultural University, was situated. And this tree symbolizes the growing connection, growing joint contacts, and growing cooperation between the city and Wageningen University and research. By planting trees, we also benefit a lot of other things. So combat glo uh, global warming, uh, help biodiversity. And yeah, that's also something that we as a city and the university together stand for, and but you also personally. So thank you again, for what you have meant for Wageningen over the past nine years, but also much longer because you also um, study here. And I wish your, you all the best in the working years ahead. Um, and we, we'll hand over you the smallest tree, but also the special, um, uh, and there's a big picture behind me that will we'll, um, show, but also a special sign that was, uh, was um, made by um, one of the famous um, Wageningen painters Henk van Ruitenbeek, and I will present you that award. If you please may come up the stage. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This, this is a tree. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, uh, Floor. Oh, please don't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
The ceremony is now coming almost to an end. But before we do that, a few words of thanks. First of all, to Nicole Dublier for your wonderful keynote. I think we all will look at the microbiome in a different way after today. I also want to thank our three young scientists for their pitches, Alejandro, Hannah, and Anastasia. Thank you very, very much. And congr congratulations once more to the winners of the four prizes. Wonderful. You all did very, very well. I'm very much looking for the years to the years to come, and I'm also very much looking forward to meeting you all at the reception that will be starting in a minute somewhere here in audio. <laughs> so with this, uh, I formally am closing this academic service. Thank you very much.